Agenda is now on to take over the lead. It's known Agenda and Irad Ortiz Jr. now moving away from Soup and Sandwiches back to second. Then Greatest Honor and Nova Rags, 16th to go. It's Pletcher in the Derby again. It's known Agenda for St. Elias Stable under Irad Ortiz Jr. Two and a half clean. Welcome back to Racing Rundown. Today we have the next iteration of Kentucky Derby Power 5. We have four 100-point prep races that we're going to be talking about uh, pulling horses from on this episode. And we are going to be recapping all four of the 100-point uh, prep races, the top horses from those from the last couple weeks of March. So that includes uh, the Louisiana Derby plus the three 100-point prep races from this past weekend. Florida Derby, UAE Derby, and Jeff Ruby Stakes. So we got... Four horse, or four races, five horses that we're going to pull from those. And we're going to start off with the number five, uh, which is like the king uh, from the Jeff Ruby Stakes this past weekend at Turfway Park. Like the king uh, it's been pretty good at Turfway uh, over, over his past few races. Uh, obviously, the win in, in the Jeff Ruby, second in the John Battaglia Memorial. And that was uh, behind a horse, Hush of a Storm, who did not run in the Jeff Ruby, was uh, one of the horses who was getting some good bat or had some good respect on the morning line. Uh, ultimately did not run, uh, opted for the Bluegrass, but had defeated him in the Battaglia. Uh, and then before that, an allowance win at Turfway. Uh, before that, even even looking back further, never worse than third in his his career. So, so some consistency underneath him. You know, the Jeff Ruby uh, is 100 points this year. Past couple of years, it hasn't been, uh, only had 20 points. So horses haven't been able to go from that uh, into the Kentucky Derby. But uh, that's obviously something that's changed this year. And, you know, it, it remains to be seen what like the King is going to be able to do uh, on the in the Kentucky Derby itself, but he's got the 100 points to get in there, and he ran a pretty good race in the Jeff Ruby, won by a length over a couple of pretty pretty good horses underneath him. Saint Hood won pretty nicely on his debut, and Hockey Dad for Doug O'Neill has had a, a pretty consistent career in his own right. So some nice horses, and then he finished ahead of you know a Grade One winner, Gret Gretzky the Great, uh, who was a Grade One winner back at two up at Woodbine, uh, and you know, so, some other horses underneath him. Tarantino was the, the favorite of the race uh, who, you know, didn't really run, run the race. His race was over after the start. So uh, he didn't really factor. But overall, strong field that he beat uh, for a race like the Jeff Ruby and uh, consistent enough to, to warrant inclusion on this list. And at number four, we have the Florida Derby third place finisher. Obviously, there's, there's a lot behind this horse I'll dive into. And that's greatest honor for Shug McGahee. Uh, this is a horse who everybody's familiar with we've had him really high on our overall rankings and uh the weekly rankings when, when we covered his races uh in the fountain of youth in the holy bowl which he won very impressively both of those starts down at Gulfstream, um closing from well off the pace uh and he had good paces to close into every time which is probably why he was able to deliver such powerful performances uh in, in those starts but obviously took a bit of a step back in the florida derby but i think one thing that me and i know jack has has kind of emphasized is we don't think this is a a, a breaking point for greatest honor sure it wasn't uh, it's a little bit more concerning it's certainly not going to be a near derby favoritism like many would have thought heading into the race but this was still a good run he rallied from from second to last and he, he came on well but there, there were some things he didn't like he's definitely still a quirky colt i think the tap it kind of is coming out in him just a little bit he didn't like being inside of horses and, and one thing that that Shug McGahee has actually mentioned since since the race is they're going to try experimenting with blinkers with with greatest honor and i think in general we've seen a lot of tap at offspring really really improve uh when adding blinkers i mean just think about the central quality he's done great stuff with blinkers you think about some of the belmont winners that have come from the tap at bloodlines like like creator in, in Taprit, both when they added blinkers, got really, really good and started to figure things out. I think Greatest Honor uh, is probably going to flourish when he adds that that little addition onto him, and I think it'll make him a better racehorse. Certainly, one you can't throw out from the Derby. Obviously, it's concerning he didn't have the run, the the great run that that you know his odds would have suggested. But by no means is he a toss come Derby Day. Uh, especially, I think the biggest key with him is if there's a pace in front of him, he's he's going to be coming late. Um, he's always going to be coming late, but the better, the stronger the pace is on the lead, uh, the more he's going to have to close into. So keep your eye on greatest honor. Third is obviously discouraging, but once again, not a complete toss out. And now we're going to move on to the number three horse on this list, which is rebels romance. Uh, the UAE Derby winner from this past weekend. Uh, and you know, it, it feels like, and Eric will definitely vouch for this. It feels like every single time, uh, there's a UAE Derby winner. We say, uh, that, you know, this is the horse that has the chance to win the Kentucky Derby. But, you know, looking back at the, the past couple years of the UAE Derby, 
the numbers certainly don't bear out uh, that the UAE Derby winner does well in Kentucky. You know, you can go back and look at some of the bad efforts that winners of that race have come uh, to produce on Kentucky Derby Day. But if you look at the past couple of UAE Derby winners, and I, I, I'll take out 2019 because those were a couple of transplanted American horses that took advantage of a soft field. Uh, but 2018, Mendelssohn won that won this race very impressively. Uh, and then, you know, his race was over at the start in the Kentucky Derby. So if the, the disaster that happened with him and Magna Moon in 2018 doesn't happen, Mendelssohn runs a lot better. In 2017, Thunder Snow didn't run the Kentucky Derby. And Thunder Snow wound up being the best group or best horse from that crop uh, of the, the 2017 Kentucky Derby starters. So, uh, you know, it, it's not all doom and gloom for the UAE Derby. Yeah, the, the numbers say that it's not a, a elite Derby prep race, but you got to look a little bit deeper to, to find uh, whether or not uh, this actually, uh, it actually bears that out. And I don't think it's fair to say that this is an automatic uh, dismiss just because this horse won the UAE Derby. Now, Talking about the actual horse himself, because I, I did do a little bit of defending of the race. Rebels Romance has been really good at Maidan. This is a horse who, you know, even going back to some of his runs uh, in the United Kingdom on the uh, on the synthetic all-weather surface, good runs there. But, you know, at Maidan, he's flourished. He won the, the 2000 Guineas trial over there uh, over a horse, Moeb, who came back to win the 2000 Guineas on the... Uh, on that card in Maidan. So very nice uh, effort over him. Uh, and then didn't run bad or didn't run too bad in the Saudi Derby. Uh, I think a lot of people jumped off him after the Saudi Derby. And, you know, that track it is not the easiest track to close into. And, you know, you it's not like Rebels Romance was super far back, but it's not like he was up there uh, toward the race. And, you know, you look at that day, it wasn't the easiest to close into, even though speed didn't really carry. Uh, it still was not the easiest track to close into. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, it, that was going a one-turn mile, and this was going a mile and three sixteenths at a track that he'd already flourished at. So I think the distance definitely helped him out there. Uh, and, you know, it's not like this was a light field either. This was, a, you know, th this isn't a group of world beaters, but, you know, Panadol had run some nice races at Maidan. The aforementioned Mogi was also there, so... It, it, he wasn't beating terrible horses. Also, the Saudi Derby winner, Pink Kamehameha, was there, uh, and Soft Whisper, even though she didn't factor at all. So he beat a good group of horses. Uh, he did it very impressively, and, you know, you can't dismiss him just because of the race. So I, I think there's definitely reasons to be concerned about him going toward uh, the Kentucky Derby, and I wouldn't say that I would be confident that he's a winner, but uh, this is a horse that you absolutely cannot toss out just merely because he's a UAE Derby winner if he eventually does run in the Kentucky Derby, which I think we're kind of coming to the conclusion on. Absolutely. And, and before I move on to, to number two, I do just want to say, I think in my opinion, this has been, this was the best uh, UAE Derby winner we've seen minus Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn, of course, had his issues with the sloppy track on Derby Day. A fast track for Rebels Romance certainly puts him on a very level playing field. He's going to factor in well with the American horses should he make the trip. Now on to number two, uh, the only horse on the list that is not from this past weekend. Uh, he ran on March 20th when the Louisiana Derby was, was the, the main, the only Derby prep, and that's Hot Rod Charlie, of course. This horse has you know, improved leaps and bounds. Uh, once Doug, Doug O'Neill and, and company really figured him out, um, when he broke his maiden, he's just, the light has, the light bulb was seemingly turned on for this horse. Obviously that good second in a bigger spell, Juvenile, that really gritty third, in the Bob Lewis, and then this one in the Louisiana Derby, very, very professionally done. And I think the biggest part is the distance, a mile and three sixteenths for him compared to most preps at a mile and an eighth. That puts him at a huge advantage, especially since he was finishing very strongly, galloped out very nicely. Um, it's, it's clear he's going. the distance is not going to be a hindrance for him come Derby Day. Um, obviously, the, the great pedigree that I'm sure many are familiar with being by previous winner Oxbow out of the dam, who also produced Matoli. So plenty of talent in this horse's bloodline, and he's only seeming to get better. He's going to be coming into the derby with, uh, you know, two preps under his belt. So third run in the form cycle. That's always a huge bonus, it seems, come come the first Saturday in May. So lots to like about Hot Rod Charlie. And in, in general, we're coming up on on a Santa Anita Derby this weekend, you want to talk about flattering the form of some horses, two horses that, that beat him in the Bob Lewis Medina Spirit Roman Centurion. Both, uh, you know, they both came back to run fine races in the uh, San Felipe, of course, but you got to think that they're they're in really good shape now with, with this win by Hot Rod Charlie come the Santa Anita Derby this weekend. And the number one horse on this list is obviously uh, Known Agenda, the Florida Derby winner from this past weekend. And, you know, looking at Known Agenda, this is a horse who, was coming into his own uh, for Todd Pletcher coming into this race. Uh, you know, 
adding the blinkers in his allowance win, uh, where he won by 11 and a half lengths on the 26th of February, definitely looked like it did do a lot of benefit for him. But you look at his overall career, definitely not bad. Uh, second on debut to Highly Motivated, uh, who is a black type winner, uh, and then beat Greatest Honor in his maiden breaking effort, which is one of his better races as of late. couple of questionable runs uh, in the the Remsen and the Sam Davis. Remsen was purely due to a track thing. You know, he was beaten very handily in that race, but, you know, that was a track thing. Todd Pletcher talked about it. And then in the Sam Davis, he was just way too far back uh, in that race. Uh, and, you know, it was also going a little bit shorter than I think he wanted to go. Last two races have been going a mile and an eighth. He's done just fine doing that. One, obviously, by 11 and a half legs. Already mentioned that in the allowance race. Beat a pretty good field in the Florida Derby. I don't want to say it's a really good field because uh, there were some questionable horses underneath him, but talented horses that have uh, shown some ability to win uh, in the Florida Derby. Obviously, greatest to honor the won the two local preps for the Florida Derby at Gulfstream, the Holy Bull and the Fountain of Youth. Spielberg had run some nice races for Bob Baffert. Collaborate was a horse who won on day or won in his maiden breaking effort by 12 and a half lengths. So really, really good efforts for known agenda and you know like i mentioned this was a horse who was coming into his own blinkers definitely helped he's by curlin so all things suggest that he's going to do even better once he gets out to even longer than this race and you know he's following the form of some of the, these pletcher horses from the past that have you know either been derby winners or done big things you know rosso is one that comes to mind for me he's going to remind a lot of people of always dreaming i've seen those comparisons uh and you know even other todd pletcher Florida Derby winners from past years that didn't do too well uh, in the Kentucky Derby. He's very similar to. So lots of positive things to say about known agenda. Uh, and, you know, I think that th this horse is absolutely one that has stamped himself on the, the Kentucky Derby trail and is one that uh, a lot of people are going to be giving a lot of rightful consideration to on the first Saturday in May. And now before we move on to the overall top five, I do just want to uh, turn it over to Eric for a second for uh, a final look at uh, last weekend's the big one of the last big pushes toward the Kentucky Derby. So uh, Eric's going to talk a little bit about possible points outcomes for this week and beyond. Yeah, so quick quick recap of last week. Our, our top five looks like Hot Rod Charlie, Like the King, Known Agenda, Rebels for Romance. So your four hundred point prep winners, and then at five you have Greatest Honor with eighty. And, and as things stand with with uh, with the four major prep hundred point preps left. Uh, the, the minimum is 20, uh, 20 points. That's with 20 Americans being in. Uh, this morning it was confirmed no Japanese horses are coming over. Uh, it does not seem like any uh, European horses are going to be using that road to the Kentucky Derby slot. So it's probably going to be 20 U.S. horses. Now, uh, based off my math and, and my running of the numbers, should every single Derby prep chalk out so you have, you know, the top four in the betting run one, two, three, four in the next 400-point Derby prep races, the minimum – value in would be 38 points so that's obviously very close to the 40 point uh guideline that's that's usually kind of been implied over the years and has a couple times been the the, the last horse in with 40 points so uh, if every race were to be chalky then every horse with 40 points or a second place finish uh in 100 point press would be in the derby that being said that's of course with the asterisk of every race being chalky the first 400 point prep races run so far a favorite has not won and sometimes they have not run well at all so that of course goes a long way in general derby point system uh the more long shots that win the higher the point uh limit's going to be or the, the the higher the last horse in's point value is going to be so the more upsets you see uh in these big races the ho more horses that don't have uh, at least 20 points right now uh, the less likely it is that a horse like Supin Sandwich or Sainthood, who were second in the Jeff Ruby and in the Florida Derby, are going to get in the Derby. And now we have one more thing that we have to take care of. Uh, that's the overall top five. As of now, uh, recording today on March 29th, 2021, uh, we have Essential Quality, number one. Uh, Two-year-old champion, really no reason why he shouldn't be number one. Concert Tour, second. Uh, Concert Tour's really good run, and the Rebel gets him there. Known Agenda moves up to third. Hot Rod Charlie goes to fourth. Uh, and then Medina Spirit, who is uh, looking like he's going to be the favorite for the Santa Anita Derby, uh, in at five. Uh, Medina Spirit gets in over some of the other horses because looking at uh, Life is Good was our number two for a very long time. And, and now that he is no longer on the Kentucky Derby Trail, the horse that he beat twice uh, in Derby prep races, uh, looking like he's going to be the favorite for the next race, uh, wisely gets that spot. So that's our top five at the end. We will have another edition of this show next week after the final, or, or not the final three races, but the, the 
th three of the final 400 point prep races. So we will see you for the, that uh, top five. Have a good one. And if you do end up betting those races, good luck with that. And we will see you for previews of those races coming up later on in the week. 400 meters to go after it is Rebels Romance out in the middle followed by New Treasure Muheeb a gap away then to France Cody in a picking up some ground and ambivalent down the outside but Rebels Romance went for home and went by Panadol they were followed then by Muheeb finishing on well battling away nicely New Treasure down the outside Tackery Pegasus but William Buick and Rebels Romance careers away and wins the derby Rebels Romance in a breeze wins by five